Welcome. This is a production brought to you by the Idaho Commission on Aging. This presentation is part of the Disease Prevention and Health Promotion Program and is facilitated by Aaron Olson. Also presented in partnership with the following. It's a beautiful afternoon in the GEM State. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Idaho Commission on Aging's Stay Safe, Recognize and Remove Trip Hazards at Home Seminar. We know as always, it's an extremely busy time of year for everyone. We want to extend our appreciation for your taking the time, or should I say investing the time, to learn a little bit more about falls and falls prevention, which is an extremely important topic, as you will learn very soon. We recognize that it's really important to feel safe at home. I think we can all agree on that. So last year, we prepared this seminar, and this is the second year that we are presenting it. We have a brand new presenter who will bring us all kinds of new information. So it's a new presenter with new content, and we think you will enjoy it. You know, it really is a great day to learn to be falls free. As the leading cause of accidental death and injury in adults over age 65, which is one out of three older Idahoans, we feel it's extremely important to be able to present this information to you today. My name is Erin Olson. I am the program specialist that is thrilled to be able to manage the disease prevention and health promotion program for the Idaho Commission on Aging. We provide services for older Idahoans, their families, their caregivers, as well as people over age 18 with disabilities. I also coordinate Idaho's Aging and Disability Resource Center, or ADRC, which provides one-stop assistance for people needing long-term assistance with LTSSs, or long-term services and supports. These programs are funded through the Administration for Community Living and the National Council on Aging. They are also celebrating Falls Prevention Week, but here in Idaho, we think it's so important to talk about falls that we are dedicating an entire month to teaching people about falls and falls prevention. Why? Because falls cause such significant injury and pain physical, emotional, and social, including community and state impacts that we want to be able to provide information that you can use to prevent falls for yourself, your family, your caregivers, and your community. Now, I have participated in enough seminars and webinars and online meetings in my life that I know the first question that always comes up that everybody wants to know is, can I have a copy of the slides? Well, we have really good news for you. Not only will the PowerPoint slides be made available on our website, so will our resource guide and the seminar recording. The resource guide is an important downloadable guide that has all kinds of extra information that we just couldn't fit into the amount of time we had here, and also because it's hard to write down all of those references that we give you. So make sure you go to our HTTP colon forward slash forward slash aging dot Idaho dot gov forward slash falls web page. And there you will find links to all of these resources and more. Now, I am a curious person. As I say, curiosity killed the cat, but so far, I think it's kind of fun to be curious. You get to learn lots of things. Since you may be too, we wanted to let you know what topics we're going to be covering and discussing today. I will start with a very brief overview of what falls are and why we care about them. After that, we'll be joined by Mike Rice. Mike's going to go over rugs, slippery services, bathrooms, lighting and stairs, unforeseen hazards from home modifications, furniture, and even some tips about our pets. We'll finish off with a little chat and some Q&A. If y'all are ready, let's go.
In today's seminar, we're focusing on trip hazards at home. In our Why Falls Matter seminar, we go into the details about what falls are, what can cause them, and how to prevent them. Please review that seminar recording from our website or from our YouTube channel. Today, we need to know just a little bit about falls so that we can discuss how to recognize and remove trip hazards in our homes. So without further ado, here's a brief primer on falls. If I were to ask all of you what a fall is, I'd probably get as many responses as there are the number of you. People definitely have different ideas about what constitutes a fall. Now, this is partly because no one wants to admit that they've fallen. This is especially true in older adults. They worry that if they admit to falling, people will take away their independence and not let them do the things that they like to do. So to make sure that we're all using the same definition of falls, I thought I would give us the official definition, at least for today. So our definition for today is unintentionally moving downward, typically rapidly and freely without control from a higher to a lower level. The important parts of that definition include that it happens unexpectedly. We did not intend to fall. We did not intend to end up where we did. Next, we have to remember that it's always downward according to gravity. Now on Earth, we are unable to fall up. Perhaps when we return to the moon or to Mars, we can then talk about some other options. But for now, we need to remember that we are always going to be falling down. Finally, in one way or another, we end up lower than we were before. So we don't have to fall to the ground or to the floor necessarily. We can fall onto a couch or a table. We can also fall into a wall. If we think about that, we're standing upright, we're walking, we trip on something, and all of a sudden we reach out, the wall catches us, but we are definitely a little bit lower than we were when we were standing fully upright. Just remember, if we started off higher than we ended up, it counts. Falling is not planned, and we don't have control over it. Generally speaking, that is. There are things we can do that will help us prevent falls from happening. There are also some things that we can do that allow us to kind of intervene. If we start to trip or slip, we can do some things that will prevent that from becoming a fall. Slips and trips aren't good, but they are definitely better than a full fall. Our Simple Steps and Why Falls Matter seminars can offer some strategies and more depth than we give you here. They, of course, are available on the website, http colon forward slash forward slash aging dot idaho dot gov forward slash falls. Now that we know how to define a fall, we can better communicate with others about what a fall is, whether we've had one or not. We are investing an entire month talking about falls because they are too common and cause an incredible amount of pain inconvenience, turmoil, and money. There are a lot of statistics out there, but here are just a few pieces of information to get us started. Number one, falls increase as we age. In Idaho, one in three older adults fall at least once each year. That's higher than the national average, which is one in four. Falls are the number one cause of accidental injury and death in people over age 65. That statistic alone should be enough to make us want to take notice and do something about it. More facts and stats like this are available both on the website and in the resource guide. The good, no, actually the fantastic news is that we can change these numbers. We like to say that all falls are preventable because they are, as long as we know what our falls risk is, what hazards we may be confronted with, and how to remove or reduce or avoid those hazards. Some of us may be familiar with the adage, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That reminds us of what should be the obvious. Avoiding falls is the key. So let's start learning how we can do that. 
It is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you Mike Rice, our trip hazards expert and presenter for the rest of our day. Mike's formal education directly relates to his work. He earned two master's degrees. One is in public health and the other is in sports and exercise studies. If that isn't enough, Mike is also a certified strength and conditioning specialist. And he's also an exercise physiologist and inclusive fitness trainer. Needless to say, Mike knows his stuff. Mike works with Central District Health. He coordinates their Fit and Fall Proof or FFP program. That is Idaho's own evidence-based falls prevention physical activity program. Among his other duties, he also trains new FFP instructors and provides home safety checks. It is in that capacity that I am proud to ask you to give your attention to Mike Rice. Starting my career with seniors as quote, quote, my specialty rather than becoming just the gym rat and giving up football and basketball coaching. When I was a kid, Mrs. Fletcher, I saw him and I can't get up. I would just, we'd all laugh on the, you know, me and the guys laughing on the floor. They get, you know, ha, 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 that's really funny. Even though I, you know, had grandmothers worked, you know, with seniors. And then I started doing this, realized, no, that is just serious as heck. It's, um, you know, a fall, it's, basically, it's dangerous and it's deadly. And at least this commercial, even back in the 80s, got people talking, even though there's comedy skits and Saturday Night Live. People would talk and the seniors got a voice saying, no, you know, this is dangerous. We are worried about this. We're no longer 20 year olds that can roll around on the floor. Um, you know, it's very dangerous and um, it could not just be painful, it could be uh, life ending. So, um, next slide, please. Has notes. Slide 17. Okay, and hopefully today, we will be able to um, open your eyes to um, some new, new points of view, ways to look at things. It may seem obvious at first, but until again, as I was saying, you um, live it and experience it, you don't quite understand it. And hopefully we can bring some understanding and wisdom to our plan. So uh, next, please. The unique thing about humans compared to all of our furry friends, we're bipedal. You know, Rover there won't fall. Uh, the seniors are concerned about it. I know giraffes, fish, we're the only ones that really worry about falling. And it seems such gravity seems such a simple thing. And we have all this technology and cars and hospitals. And we can just simply fall because of old age and um you know, just leaving us with this little quandary. So today's game plan is I'm just going to basically go through like a, like we did with the uh, home visits and just kind of point out things that we've seen and that we fixed. And these are some of the more common complaints that we had. And so rugs are the biggest one. Um, rugs can be a huge help or the opposite. They are the leading cause of unintentional injury. I would, you know, just move or replace a rug that's not flat. If it bows, if the edge curls up, just probably just remove it. Um, especially the ones that slip on the floor. If you notice those slides, they give you a rug and you go down the slide. So that could give us a little hint on some rugs. Those heavy mats that are thick and they don't move are the best thing. They're pleasant to stand on and it can get wet. You can, you know, if you slide a little bit yourself, it's not gonna move. It's probably one of the best uh, things right now helping seniors out. So, um, or you can end up like the poor gent um, coming through on a linoleum floor and down you go, unfortunately. So, okay, uh, next please. As now. Some rugs have been around forever. Um, got into it with my stepfather about his rugs. He had them since forever, and I don't blame him. But some of the safe things we could do is put a no-slip uh, mat under the rug. 
and the rug will sit flat, it'll be comfortable, and it just won't slide around. Or there's no um, slip grip things you can put in the corners, and your rug becomes much safer, even more safer than just trying to tape it down with duct tape. And as a final option, a compromise, hang it up on a wall. They get to see their, you know, memento, and it's up on the wall where they get to enjoy it, and it's safe, and you can get a good safety mat for, for your um, senior of concern. Next, please. And slippery surfaces. Now that we're going to be, we're not thinking of it now, we're going to be coming into snow and wet weather. And on basic linoleum, regular socks, we'll watch kids. They'll just take off, start running and sliding across linoleum. Great when you're a kid, but if you're trying to cook, you could, you know, be very dangerous if you're just trying to walk and live. So they have those um, stick em socks, we call them. They have the no-slip surfaces. And you can always just get a good pair of reliable slippers with rubber soles, and it's much more difficult to slip. And again, proper rugs um, reduce the uh, chance of slipping, and they can help absorb the water. And of course, everyone can pitch in. You can put mops or towels near the entryway and just have everyone wipe their shoes and wipe up whatever snow or whatever spills. Again, it's hard to think of that here, you know, as hot as it's been, but It'll be here in a few weeks. So okay. next, please. And we're going into the, the restrooms, so the bathrooms. Bathrooms are unfortunately high percentage falls in here. It's a um, very common room. I mean, who doesn't go in the restroom every day? And so um, it's gonna be wet surfaces, especially if you've, if you've showered or come out after someone has showered. And they can get cluttered a little bit, really bad. Towels will fall, you know, shampoo and items will fall, kids' toys, electrical cords if you have your you know, hair dryer or heater in there. And they could just be, you know, just left inadvertently and become a um, slip hazard. And once again, one of the best solutions is a good solid rug or mat that does not slip. It can help absorb the water and um, be a good stable surface to stand on. Next, please. As now, and continuing with the restrooms, some of the um, talking to some of the people, they asked me, you know, some solutions. And of course, you can put the little handheld um, on the toilet. It doesn't bolt into the walls, it connects to the toilet so someone can guide themselves up or down. And condensation sometimes just drips onto the floor and causes enough water to be a problem because when you know you're using the toilet you're in a vulnerable position and you're not thinking about slipping and it can happen then there's of course rugs and mats that can help prevent that and one thing um, <clears throat> i found i wanted to get for many of the people is there's a double edge it's like a shower curtain but you turn it sideways the spring loads and you can push it to the floor into the ceiling and it'll give somebody um, basically a good pole to grab on. Um, she has a position well for the toilet and for the shower. They cost under $200 and I think they're great. Again, I was trying to um, sponsor a few people through um, um, our connections to get some of these people those, but it didn't quite work, but these are available and at about $200, I think it's a really, good thing and could help prevent a lot of falls because if you're in a rental house or a temporary housing situation you can't drill in to the wall for safety that is a good option and uh, it won't damage the property and of course um, when you're out in public or whatever you can bring the person could just use their walker lock it and then use it as a handrail to uh, help themselves with the toilet and bathrooms being small, the serious problem is you can, it's hitting your head when you come out of the shower, you slip, the shower's right there, it's porcelain, your head is on its way down, and uh, that's just bad news. And um, just being a smaller room, it's a huge cause of head injury. Um, just an um, unfortunate thing, everyone needs to shower and use the restroom, but if we use um, these it's cheaper to go purchase some of this equipment than take the risk. And of course the sinks, countertops, everything is there. And when your head 
And um, if you remember comedian Bob Saget, uh, the home, um, you know, played TV dad, the home video show, was in the bathroom, had the same slip, hit the tub. He managed to get up, clean himself up a bit, but went into his bed, did not report this. And of course, we lost him and, you know, family and fans were devastated. And, you know, it usually takes a celebrity to get everyone's attention, but this could just be anyone. If it can happen to a celebrity, it could be, you know, your loved one, you, you know. So it's just one of those things that's unfortunate and preventable. Using the physics, um, a person that's five foot nine, my height, falling at one gravity, which is um, 32.17 feet per second squared, but you don't have to worry about that at five foot nine. But even that, you can strike the floor at 20 feet per second, roughly 14 miles per hour. This is about half the speed of high school uh, baseball players swinging their bat. And that's the head of an elder falling to the back of the head, the most vulnerable part, you know, under the floor. And that's why it's really important to, you know, use safety in the restroom, get those rugs out, handrails, you know. Um, I know it's the cost at first seems a little bit prohibitive, but if you think of someone's hospital stay in the care of a head injury, it's, you know, I was, you know it's not a risk. Slide 31, lighting stairs. And then, Lighting and stairways, I put them two together because they seem to go hand in hand on the home safety checks. You find, like you see pictured, um, that's just, well, terrible. There's very little lighting. The stairs are not taped or marked off. It looks like there's some kind of strip on there, but still no one can see it. And then the handrail, there's no paint or tape to use it. So people may not think to grab for it. This is really, you know, obviously a danger the light is it's you no know, especially it's not at the top where you really would need to start your descent down the stairs if you um, were going down there and if you had your hand full of groceries or something you it's just not good next please As notes. and here we have from um, actually you got this from the OSHA website the ideal stairway as you can see there's high contrast the stairs, the stairs are each marked off. They're uniform in shape, and the handrail is bolted in sturdy, and you can see it and, and be able to grab it and um, use the stairway. Uh, ideally, they would all look like this, but you know the other one we can fix, make it more like this. There was really not much of an excuse for no lighting and no and no tape and no way to mark it off. So. <clears throat> and ironically, lights being too bright, it can cause glare and you're going to turn away from it and then you could step and trip, especially near tables. Um, the bright wood or paint could um, just reflect it and just blind someone that they just turn and not look and you trip over a chair or something. Um, you can use decorative tablecloths to cover up the brightness. And um, when it's not the sun, place your lamp so they just don't flash right into your face. This ends up a lot of times a problem in bedrooms. The overhead light flares right into the person's face. And then you can use shades or lower the intensity of your bulbs. And sometimes there's a warm color option in some modern lamps, or you can purchase those types of light bulbs with warm colors. Those um, are really good. Okay, so enough light, but again, not too much. Yes, no, Night lights are great. We handed those out during our home safety visits. Um, a dark room or a hallway, um, they're not just um, shown in scary movies for, um, for just for no reason, because you know, we always think of a scary hallway at night with Halloween coming up, you know, someone will jump out at you to be silly. But if you're a senior living alone, especially, it could be a problem. It could be a shoe. Uh, anything could inadvertently get there. So nightlight, the research has showed the ideal color is red. It contrasts well with everything, and you can see it. And plus, 
red does not disturb your, your sleep rhythm like bright white light will. Um, it's just your body thinks, oh, it's time to wake up, I see bright light. But red seems to um, mute that. So if a person needs to be up, use the restroom or whatever, red is a um, better choice. And for some, it sets a really you know, comfortable mood. They like the color red. And for those that think red is alarm because you have stop signs, emergency vehicles, venomous snakes, they're all red, you can go with a muted blue. That'd be the second choice. It may possibly, um, a few things you can't see, but it is always, it's, it's a good second choice and your person will be able to see uh, if they need to get up in the middle of the night. As now. And an emergency light near the bed, just one of those lights you tap and it comes on are ideal because they hear something, see something, or need to um, get up out of bed for whatever reason. Um, it's quick, it's convenient, and they'll use it because it's not, you don't have to flip your thumb around looking for a little switch. They'll just tap it, it's on, they're safe, they can go do what they need to do and get back in bed. Um, or a mini flashlight or something that is just Basically, use one with a light to be convenient. A little flashlight is, works as well. Take it to the bathroom, and you, know, you can pretend you're out camping or whatever. So, um, and again, uh, night lights. I do recommend the type that have the rechargeable batteries. So when the power goes out for whatever reason, it comes on, and your person has access to light. They can just unplug it, take it with them. So. And luckily now with phones, even seniors are getting phones, you can just hit the light option and the camera light comes on and gives them a little light. This, and um, moving on to home modifications. This was a big one during the safety visit, especially with the people that lived in their house for decades. Um, they made changes, again, when you're a 30 year old, with a little bump in the carpet, you don't think anything of. You're 60 year old, you now have a cane or a walker. All of a sudden it was a big problem. And of course, they weren't going to uh, give up their home. Uh, the best we could do is get, you know, get them a little ramp, tape it off, light it up better. But still, like if you were in a wheelchair or walker going up and down that ramp, if that was the kitchen to the living room, that's really uh, going to be an issue. Um, so it's just kind of think and plan ahead. And I'd say, you know, put, spend the money now so you're not spending it on your health later. So. Um, but it's no, it's, it's less live. furniture arrangement. Um, the picture of a young person, as you can see, a young person won't think that much of furniture arrangement. They're just happy to have furniture and be in college or whatever. But by the time you're 60 year old, um, you don't think of as much of um, how basic you know your furniture can be. And it just becomes more risky over time. And furniture, of course, is expensive. You only want to, really want to buy it once, even, you know, go into the youth ranch or whatever. So, um, and we often just deal with it because we just deal with it every day. Next, please. As now, it's slide 39. The sentimental value furniture. What if you, you know, grandma's chair is broken? Well, the sort of options uh, you can is you can go ahead and pay to have it repaired. It could be her Christmas present or something. Or if not, you could just move it to another part of the house. One time we just did that, the chair, was, we moved it to her bedroom and put a you know stuffed bear from her granddaughter in it. That way she got to see it and enjoy it. And it was out of the way, not being unsafe where someone could sit and crash into it and break. You could give it to a family member if it's over with you know, Uncle John or whatever, it's still in the family and safe. And hopefully you can come up with options to avoid an unpleasant confrontation. You know, because, you know, especially if you had it for years, it has some amount of value. She, grandma or grandpa wants to keep it. We don't blame them, but these are some options we found to use so we could avoid any um, unpleasantness. Okay. As now, it's slide 40 questions. Questions that probably ask yourself about when you buy furniture or helping an um, older adult place their furniture. Does it block access to the window blinds and shades? That's, I've always crawled over the couch and did that myself to move the shades or move the fan. 
Okay, so furniture pushing a rug up so it becomes a trip hazard. I've seen and done that a lot. Uh, can you just, people just sit and stand without obstruction? You know, the, the coffee table could be in a terrible place because you'd like to put your feet on it or other miscellaneous things, or it's just simply full of items. Um, so you know, that's another thing to be aware of. Traffic flow through, is it logical? It makes sense, safe. You know, so, sometimes around the TV, you make almost an obstacle course and it looks just like that. And the bottom slide, I was, you know, that looks like my college daughter's room. You know, there's just no way that would be safe for really anybody, even her. So, um, you know, just. And here is, <clears throat> excuse me, the miscellaneous. Uh, there's always. You know, like this. Pets, well, you know, pets, their companionship is huge for anyone, even people, but people who are single living alone, um, Fido or Fluffy is very important and then um, there's just, you know, no way you ask them to part with them, but they like to be close to their owners and they often just lay there quietly. You don't think you get up to get some coffee or something and you stepping on Fido and over you go. And now you're, you know, both might be facing an injury. So some basic solution is a, um, a brightly colored or perhaps a bell collar, something that really stands out and it's big. It, you know, your pet may not be happy at first, but it's a good safety call. <clears throat> and you can train a pet to um, sleep in a specific bed. Uh, the cats don't typically do that as well as dogs, of course. But at night, a pet can be placed in a specific room or area with their, you know, uh, litter box food and such and so you're not they're not a fall hazard at night and if you get a new pet you can consider getting a breeder color that contrasts your carpeting or your furnishing and such so um, those are just things and then when talking to um, the, the senior of concern just absolutely reassuring you're not taking Fido or Fluffy you're just making your room safer so both of you are safe and then always back to the basics. These, these cords are always going to be a thing with our technology. It's great, but sometimes you forget to put the vacuum away, you, something, and or you just don't think you plug in the TV and it's running across the middle of the room. There are you know, things to be considered. If, if it's a trip hazard to you, it would be for you know your older adult in your, in your house. Basic clutter just always clutter it just um again um, some people live like a college room for um, the rest of their lives and they it's really just not safe to do that and also morale people like an organized room it just brings up your morale and it's more home like and then there's again checklists if we can get and again you can always request a free home audit having a a third eye going through and listing things for you uh, can be a huge help. Uh, again, fit and fall coordinators do it. Um, call it. I'm sure the hospitals do it. They send nurse uh, well, and places so, and social workers. Um, we've got tons of resources to um, uh, get a home safety check. And of course, again, it'll be easier and not time consuming to um, prevent a fall than to have one. Slide 40, 45, document six words. And I appreciate your time and hope you um, found this useful and somewhat entertaining. And uh, again, we apologize for the glitches, but if you have any questions, please feel free. I think you're still muted, Aaron. It told me I was not muted, but I guess I was. I was just saying how much I enjoyed your slide and I nodded and 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 was going, uh-huh, about lots of things that, that you talked about. Um, almost every slide 
there was something that either I or my family or somebody I know has done or has had had challenges with. I really like uh, some of your um, recommendations for pets because I think that's one of the, the biggest ones. You know, most, uh, I shouldn't say most, many uh, people have a pet, feel like, you know, they don't have a good life without a pet. And then as they grow older, they become companions. But like you said, they, they tend to come, especially cats, sit or lay down right behind you and you don't know it. So the bill's on a collar. The one I really liked was contrast. Can you talk a little bit more about contrast in general and why that's important? Um, sure. <clears throat> I'm kind of noticing it. I turned 55 this fall and my eyes are just not what they were. And sometimes I just need a little brighter reading light. But, you know, if you have brown carpet and brown cat, um, camouflage works in nature, so it'll work in your house at the unfortunate times. But if you can, I know it'll mean vacuuming a little more, say if you have white carpet and a black cat, but you're not going to miss, you know, seeing a black cat. And I have a bell on my cat, and that's helped out a lot. I know where he is. And get up in the morning, and cats like to just do bizarre things for no reason. I can see or hear because they'll at least look at me when I get up at night and ring it enough. I know about where he is and won't trip on him because even in my 20s, I've tripped on my dogs and cats. And um, for the, another cat, we actually had to, there was a third restroom we never used. We put in a bed and food and stuff. And every night the cat went in there and then it was not an issue until we woke him up you know, in the morning. But um, you know, contrasting, that's kind of like the red light because it'll turn green a darker color, but if, you know, green light to green, it's harder to see. Red, because we don't have a lot of red things, it contrasts it as a night light. So even, um, it'll also reflect Fluffy's eyes a little more. So anything to help you see, even if Fluffy's orange, it's going to stand out to a red night light. And so you won't trip up here if you need a uh, midnight restroom trip. Without tripping as you go for your restroom trip, right? Yeah. <laughs> Something like that? Something like uh, that, yeah, definitely. In the Q&A, we had somebody who wondered if you knew of any resources that people could use if they don't have the finances to make some of the changes that you were talking about. And I was hoping to pull Bill Gates from a burning building and then I could fund this for us all. Um, we've tried, but and then with uh, COVID, I, you know, I even friends with people that work at Home Depot and they're like, we just don't got the funding to do that this time because it's hard to find workers and hard to get supplies in. So um, I've not had a lot of, like some, if you're a member of a church, you can always bounce it off the pastor. There may be somebody in your church that's a handyman and has some extra wood or something to help, you know, put the handrails in. The handrails are not expensive. It's just finding, you know, where to drill them in. And you need, you know, somebody really competent to do that. And then if you have a rental, uh, I wish I could scholarship people, you know, that um, double pull thing. Because that, it really held pretty solid. and. Um, it's a good option. So um, I think I would... the poll is a good idea too. You're absolutely right, though. A lot of us, especially in um, rural communities, have some type of organizations. Often it's churches. It could even be uh, the fire departments that are are willing to help. Um, I know our fire departments uh, often do both light bulb replacement and uh, checking on your smoke alarm batteries free of charge. So that's kind of a, a good thing. Uh, and I was going to say, I have to do kind of a self plug that uh, the Commission on Aging and your area agencies on aging do have a chore program. Unfortunately, it is very underfunded, but the purpose of that is to make some of these uh, small modifications as well. And there are actually a lot of things in the works across the state because of COVID, if you can say there was one good thing from COVID, it was that it brought attention to the fact that some people who are in their homes and are isolated in their homes 
need to have safety put in and they can't always afford to do so to do so um, safely. So those are all some options. Do though, uh, like Mike said, be very careful. If you're going to install something like a grab bar, it needs to be able to obviously support your weight plus in order to be safe. You don't wanna rely on a grab bar and then have it fall out of the wall. So make sure it's, it's uh, installed correctly. Very, very good. All right. Um, I'm going to ask this question. Um, can you tell us how physical activity and fall risk interrelate and how um, people might be able to do something about that, even if they tend to be more homebound than others? Sure. Um, when I started as a PE major back in the day, basically you say the prime directive PE majors is specificity. And it very means your body adapts very specifically what you asked it to do. And the opposite of that it means if you don't if you don't use it, you lose it. And we're pretty much a death-bound society, and we become very good at just sitting on our backsides. We start losing atrophies away the ability to stand. Um, you see other cultures, they sit on floors, they'll sit on rugs. And that just, it just takes more effort to do that. And so they maintain a little better in other cultures. So if you maintain that strength and balance, essentially fit and flow is practicing balancing. Uh, we do funny walks, it's, you know, it's entertaining, but you know, you might think just simply standing side to side um, and shuffling has anything to do with it, but when you go out on ice or you have icy stairs and you're good at shuffling side to side, your odds of a fall are down. Um, if you can stand up out of a chair, that's a standard measurement most uh, everybody doing senior care does to see um, you know, your function. It goes hip and quad strength, everything you would need to stand. And if you can stand efficiently and not be falling around and wobbling, your years of life, um, are greatly extended. There's a study out there called the Grim Reaper study. I hate telling people about it because they're a Grim Reaper, but they found the Grim Reaper walks about three miles an hour, 2.8. So if you can walk a 5K in an hour, you're in front of the Grim Reaper. And um, deaths from all causes of any age are much lower if you can outwalk or outrun the Grim Reaper. So um, we have. It's just um, what's one of those statistical things. The Australians were curious to how fast the Green Reaper walked and come up with the study. And it's pretty reliable because independent at home, if you can get up and walk, you know, get yourself to the restroom, get yourself, you know, your dinner or whatever, your independence and, you know, is that much longer. And being stronger. And more balanced, of course, helps that too. I mean, age is something that's going to catch us eventually, but we can hold it off longer. And because you're practicing balancing, you're practicing walking. You know, walking is so underrated, but if you just get up and, and do that and stay active, that's a huge, um, just a huge thing. I concur absolutely. <laughs> and that's actually the perfect lead in for our Thursday seminar, which is called Simple Great. Steps which is about at-home exercises you can do to uh, do just what Mike said, just be active. If you can just move, no matter, no matter what kind of movement you're doing, that is one of the best ways to prevent falls. Well, unfortunately we are out of time, uh, partly because of some technical difficulties. I'd like to thank all of you though, for attending and uh, being patient with us and Mike for being patient as well as he didn't have some slides to begin with. Want to remind everybody that your local area agency on aging is your one-stop resource for information on falls prevention, as well as programs like um, uh, congregate meals or home delivered meals, transportation, chore, homemaker. So contact your AAA. Also be sure to join us uh, for our next three seminars all coming up this month that are on the website. Again, the website, which also has your resource guide, recordings, and a bunch of other material is aging.idaho.gov. 
forward slash falls, F-A-L-L-S. Thank you, everybody, and we hope you have a falls-free rest of your day. Thank you for joining us. This has been a production brought to you by the Idaho Commission on Aging. Supporting well-being for aging Idahoans since 1968. For more information on resources to stay at home, stay healthy, stay safe, and to stay informed, visit our website at www.aging.idaho.gov.